Oh, hi. Just doing a bit of twittering before the show. And my bollocks. People say to me, Sean, what is Lockopedia? And I say, whatever their name is, it's a very long word. And they go, yeah, all right, smart ass. What is Lockopedia? And I say, well, it's actually the title of my new show. My new show, it's a uh, uh, stand-up show for Lockopedia. But within it, there is this interactive element. I play audience battleships. Basically what I do is I shout out a row, letter, like E, and a number, say, for example, 24. It's different every night. And whoever's in that seat, I go <whistles> Whoever's in that seat, all they have to do, they have to give me their name, uh, a letter, any letter, and a word beginning with that letter, for example, P and pirates, and I see if I can do anything on it. I've got some jokes here in my book of Lockopedia, but as you can see, not that many, really. There's a couple in there. <laughs> There's not actually very much in there. And, uh, or I try to make something up out of it, or, or just panic. It's quite risky. Some nights it's very risky, but on the whole it seems to work, seems to go very well. It gets people involved in a different way. You get people involved in the show who would never normally shout out, because normally it's just the people in the front row and the drunk people at the back who get involved in shows. So uh, it seems to work really well. And I've actually had this valued, and they said it was worth uh, 14 .99. And I said, well, it costs more than that from Ryman's. They said, yeah, but you've written in it. I think they missed the point. P! 22! <laughs> P22! Who's in P22? <laughs> Hello, what's your name? Richard, can you, yeah, shout out. What, what letter would you like, Richard? M. No, no, it's Richard's go. <laughs> the rules, it's my game, I made it up. No, this is why I have the audience battleships, for exactly situations like this. Because <laughs> then it becomes like some Sesame Street nightmare, where I'm just hearing, <laughs> P-O-B-N-O. -O. Oh, uh, uh. What do you want, Richard? W. w. What W would you like? Wood. Wood. <laughs> Wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was that? What was that? I'll take that, cos wood was tough. Um, <laughs> someone just went, Aah! Wasn't even a word. I mean, this job's hard enough without you making words up, mate. <laughs> you having your own... Look, just cos there's about two, two and a half thousand people in here, that doesn't mean you have to be the arsehole. You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't put that responsibility on yourself. It's just... <laughs> it's too much to handle. Somebody finally... Wood. Well, I think we find that uh, Sean was out of his comfort zone with Wood. Um, <laughs> I'm happy with that. Um, <laughs> OK. J40. Badges. Badgers. Those just went down there. Badgers. Hey! Badgers. Would you like something on badgers? Because J40 has just gone, I can't do this. <laughs> I've had a very hard day. I came out on the ticket. It said laughing, having a drink. Didn't mention anything about coming up with letters and words. <laughs> and I, I was just gone too far. Badgers. Badgers. What's going on there then? Um, <laughs> No, I, I, when, I was a, when I was a kid, right, my dad, he's a very weird man, my dad. I mean, not very weird man, he's a bit odd, but unusual. He, he, didn't like, he didn't like television, he didn't like us watching television. He, was, he wasn't keen on that. And he used to, like, make up games for us to play. And one of the games he used to make up... You ever play this game, Spine in a Sack? Do you ever play that? When you were kids? Do you remember Spine in a Sack? Or maybe, maybe they called it something different where you lived. Um, what he'd do is he'd go out and get a bit of roadkill, you know, get a bit of roadkill. <laughs> Any old bit of roadkill, right? And he'd take it home and he'd, he'd, he'd get, the, get the spine out. He'd take the spine out of the animal. <laughs> and then he'd, he'd break up all the vertebrae, like that. And he'd put them in a sack. Then he used to bounce it on our heads. <laughs> and we had to guess what animal it was. <laughs> I go, Badger. I go, don't be stupid. It's not heavy enough, is it? <laughs> it's part of the sack. You probably called it something like back in a bag or something like <laughs> lumber satchel. I don't know. People have loads of different words for it. It's 
fair. You'll probably all be playing it with your kids tonight. You'll be driving around going, is that something? Yeah, get that squirrel. They'll never guess that. It's a chipmunk. It's not indigenous. <laughs> Thanks for that, Badger. Yeah. All right. Um, someone from the, the top there. Uh, double A 15. What? It's a miss. <laughs> you said that with so much pleasure in your voice. <laughs> you went, it's a miss. Carly. So what's what's your name? You shouted out to Mitt. What what's that over there? Carly. No, now it has just turned into random lunatics shouting stuff out <laughs> at a bus stop. <laughs> Parsley, walnuts. <laughs> they want to make me work. It's not fair. <laughs> what, the man who shouted out Miss, what would you like? What's your name? Yeah? Honestly, you, you, you I wouldn't say you've taken to this like a duck to water, to be honest. <laughs> I have had tougher nights. I was in Didcot, they just shouted out the names of outlying villages. <laughs> Up at Didsbury, what you got on that then, mate? <laughs> Bedgeworth, come on. <laughs> Bedgeworth. Well, I said, well, it's a lovely little village. Not a village, it's a hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> come up here from London with your shoes. I really like the orderly way that this is being conducted. <laughs> Where people are going, it's just shout out loud time. <laughs> it's like, you know, you know, in primary school, when you get a dad that goes, there's 10 minutes, you can just go fucking bonkers. <laughs> and the kids are going, bah, bah, bah. They're going, oh, we can go mad. Probably people standing there with trousers down, like that. Just pouring yogurt on themselves, going, yeah, it's fine. He said, he said we can just go fucking nuts. That's why he said, it's that time in the show. And then, when he says it's over, we'll sit down and go, oh, yeah, very good point, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Someone from over there, anyway, we'll do, we'll do another one. F for flatulence. F for flatulence. <laughs> Did you put on an Irish accent, or is that natural? <laughs> F for flatulence. Well, I'll take that, because that's what? He said, I'm actually from Newcastle. Are you eating or something? Is that what it is? <laughs> Have you got like a cake? Go, I'm actually from Newcastle. <laughs> it's just what cake does to my accent. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, this is a true story, actually. I once, once uh, I was at school in an exam, and uh, I farted during the exam, right? And I got accused of cheating, like that. They said, you were squinting. I said, that was pressure. <laughs> I didn't do very well at school, me. I, I, when I was at school, they had, they had qualifications called CSEs. Do you remember, anyone remember those? Which were fucking useless, they were. Because a couple of years after I left, they just got rid of them. They sort of disbanded them. They were suddenly like, they were like currency that was no longer legal tender. <laughs> if you went for a job, they go, well, these are meaningless. They don't mean anything. Having a CSE was the equivalent to having a sticker saying, Sean done some maths. <laughs> uh, B9. B9. <whistles> Who's in B9? Hello. What's your name? Russell. Hello, Russell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you were paying attention earlier. They, they were. <laughs> <laughs> They were giving me letters and stuff. Um, a. 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 And what A would you like? Anti-disestablishmentarianism. Anti-disestablishmentarianism. <laughs> you can't even fucking say it. <laughs> Anti-disestablishmentarianism. Do you know what it means? No. no. It's just a long word, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, could have said anything. Well, anti-disestablishmentarianism, all I've got to say on that is, uh, fuck off, Russell. <laughs> 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 
Nothing personal. <laughs> H9. Oh, sorry. <laughs> can you shout? Can you shout? Emma. Hello, Emma. Um, C for Christmas. C? For Christmas. 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 That's easy, isn't it? Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas. Oh, it's coming soon. <laughs> no, Christmas. Um... <laughs> What I love about Christmas is the nativity plays, obviously, seeing my children in nativity plays. Because it's great, isn't it? Because once they've said their line, you can just fuck off, can't you? <laughs> it's great, that. I love that. They go, she goes, no room. You go, right, brilliant. Pack up the video camera, <laughs> like that. Unlit fag in your mouth. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> oh, dear. That'll do. I'm happy with that. Um, <laughs> J9. <laughs> J9. It doesn't have to, it can be any word you want. J9. Who's in J9? Chris. Chris. Hello, Chris. P for pirates. P for pirates. There. <laughs> You're very obviously prone to suggestion, aren't you, Chris? Um, <laughs> and. Yes! Fucking yes! Normally, at this point in the show, I'm going, look, some nights it works. Um, <laughs> P for pirates, you want that? OK, we'll have P and pirates, yeah. I wish I'd written something on it now, rather than just use it as an example. Um, <laughs> but, um... I go to a lot of kids' parties, right? Well, with my kids, obviously. Um, <laughs> I don't just turn up, you know. I'm on the telly, I love cake, come on. And I was at one recently, I took my kids to one recently, and they were, they were, the, the, the theme of the party was pirates, and all the kids were running around dressed as pirates. And I thought, it's weird, isn't it, how like, pirates, like 200 years ago, were basically rapists, thieves and murderers, and now they're lovable children's characters, isn't it? <laughs> I wonder if you go to a party in 100 years' time, they'll all be dressed as terrorists. And instead of saying, shiver my timbers, they go, I spit on your decadent western wet. <laughs> it can only be another 40 years before you go to a kid's party and they're all dressed as Nazis. <laughs> and they walk around going like that. Papers, papers, where are your papers? <laughs> I did a mini Sieg Heil there, because that's sort of funny, a mini one. <laughs> if I did a full one, someone takes a photo, that's my career over, really. <laughs> Especially standing there in Lecton. That... <laughs> that doesn't look good, does it? T... <laughs> 20... No, shut up. <laughs> the problem is, it's such a big room, you can't really control it. It's <laughs> L what? Yeah. What? L for love. L for love. Oh, Jesus Christ. L for love. I remember. Ah, oh, love. Love, 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 love. <laughs> love. Hello? <laughs> no, I'm still at the Apollo. Yeah. All right, see you then, love. Bye. Do it, because I can't. Um, someone from over here. There's some more civil over here. Monkey. What? Monkey. monkey. Oh, can't go wrong with monkey, can you? <laughs> well, in my hands, you can. <laughs> You've been to Chessington. Everyone been to Chessington World of Adventures? Yeah? You know, the roller coaster actually goes over the gorilla's cage. It does. It goes over the gorilla's And I was on the road. I looked down, and I swear, one of the gorillas looked up at me and just saluted like that. <laughs> as if to recognise my genetic superiority. <laughs> they say, you've got a monorail in the sky and we've got a fucking tyre. <laughs> and you gave us that. <laughs> you've won, buddy. It's over. <laughs> Just shoot us now. 
OK. Um, X20. <whistles> what? Ah, oh, Gandhi. <laughs> Gandhi. As luck would have it, <laughs> as luck would have it, I did a whole show on Broadway all about Gandhi. <laughs> Wasn't funny though. It was all about terrible sacrifices he made. <laughs> no, I'm Gandhi. I like Gandhi. I like Gandhi. Do you know this is a true story about Gandhi? This is actually, this is true. A lot of people can think this is set up. It's not. Obviously, I wouldn't have any fucking idiots like these as friends. Um, <laughs> Gandhi, do you know what Gandhi used to do? One of the things he used to do was to test his resolve uh, and his rejection of the flesh. He used to sleep at night in a hut with a 16-year-old virgin like that, every night. And I like the idea that he comes out in the morning and just goes, Ooh, failed again. <laughs> Let's try tonight, see if I can do it tonight. <laughs> but he believed in non-violent struggle, which is also known as dancing. I'm just keep going until you're all fuck off. Um, <laughs> any, anything else? Anyone else? What? <laughs> Jerusalem artichoke. <laughs> A nice easy one. <laughs> Did you know in Senegal they've got no word for Jerusalem artichoke? <laughs> Imagine living there. <laughs> I'll have one of them. One. Uh, what are they called? I don't know. Uh, should we make something up? No, it's too hot, isn't it? <laughs> Rohypnol. <laughs> uh, I, like, I like the kids' version, Rohypsilix. Um, <laughs> no, you're in the front. You've had badger. Testicles, though, I'll take that. That's easy, that is, testicles. <laughs> Did you know, apparently, if a man masturbates twice a week, it reduces his chance of prostate cancer, right? And I've worked out my weekly tally, I'm immortal. But, um, <laughs> X20. <whistles> Gravel. <laughs> Gravel? Well, you see, you've fallen into my trap there, sir. I'm a bit like Darren Brown. The whole, throughout the show, I've been laying in little trigger words <laughs> to make you say gravel. Yeah, because it's my finale. Basically, I'll do a whole big finale all about gravel. <laughs> I'll sing a song. Gravel, gravel, doesn't matter how far you travel, there'll always be a bit of gravel. <laughs> and then what happens is lorries come in and they tip up <laughs> loads of gravel till it fills up, till I'm at the top like that, just going, gravel, <laughs> gravel. You need to always need a bit of gravel. I'll tell you what, you know people say that what's a spooky sound is footsteps on gravel. No, I'll tell you what's really spooky, it's just one footstep on gravel. <laughs> just... <laughs> and then nothing. <laughs> OK, someone from the top, um, C25. <laughs> Misogyny. Oh, yeah, well, misogyny, that's a lovely topic, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, God, my wife is so misogynist. No. <laughs> my husband is so misogynist. People are always talking about the difference between men and women, aren't they? What they are. I think the main difference between men and women is women's brains have developed differently because from quite an early age, they've had to do a very complicated operation every day, haven't they? They've had to put a bra on. <laughs> very, something very tricky. You have to do it behind your back. I mean, I'm struggling now, and this is imaginary. <laughs> and I think doing that every day must make your brain develop. Sometimes my wife just puts her hands up a jumper, comes out of her sleeve. <laughs> it's like magic. <laughs> now, I reckon if boys had to put a bra on in the morning, they wouldn't start school till lunchtime. <laughs> Dad, I can't get it on. Can you help me? No, I can't do mine either. <laughs> Took me an hour to get these tights on. <laughs> but I actually think the main difference between men and women is uh, our genitals are much easier to draw. <laughs> Just... <laughs> you know. And I think that's given us the confidence to go out and build bridges and invent stuff. <laughs> All right. Uh... 
T22. Fritzel. Fritzel. That's actually what they call crisps in Lidl. <laughs> yeah, I'll get some cheese fritzels. Yeah, don't mean. <laughs> I think we've, um, we've, we've shredded this dry. You've been a fantastic crowd. I hope you enjoyed the show. I'll see you again sometime. Thank you very much. Thank you.